Hello guys! Today, once again, Russia launched a massive missile attack on Ukraine. 29 different cruise missiles were targeted on our capital, Kyiv. Luckily, all of them were stopped, but it seems like nothing new, right? We've all seen the real face of Russia, and since the start of this invasion, there were hundreds of such attacks. But there is a huge difference. There were also explosions and destructions and constant air raid alerts in Belgorod and Kursk, which are in Russia. War is returning back home to Russia where it belongs. And you have to agree, this is something that seemed totally impossible before the invasion or right at the beginning when Putin was persuading not just his authoritarian allies, but also democratic leaders of the world, that this is going to be a blitzkrieg and he will take Kyiv in three days. And look how the war has changed its course. And now we have Russian volunteers fighting already in two Russian regions for the liberation of Ukraine and potentially the liberation of Russia. I was really glad to listen to that press conference and the description of their tasks within this indeed special military operation inside Russia. Let me share with you the most important things about this change in the course of war from the Ukrainian perspective. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda, fake news and Kremlin criminals, of course. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. So today, once again, it was a very stressful morning for Ukrainians. We were hiding in bomb shelters, in the underground. All of the plans were ruined. Luckily, in Kyiv, no one died, but destructions were serious because of the debris. But all of the 29 missiles were stopped and actually they cost Russia crazy money. Approximately one such attack may cost $400 million. Imagine, with all of its depressive regions, destroyed roads, how desperately Russia needs these millions inside of its own country, but they choose to invest it in death and destruction. And this is sad, pathetic, irrational, crazy Russia as it is. What is also cool, and we discussed that inside Ukraine, that one of these cruise missiles, super expensive, it may cost like $15 million, but it may cost human lives, which is most important. One of these cruise missiles were stopped by a simple Ukrainian machine gun. Well, not Ukrainian production, but I mean in the hands of the Ukrainian soldier. It was Browning M2. And the troops noticed this trajectory of the missile and uh, were able to stop it. Huge. And actually, this is not the first time and I suppose not the last time when we perform such, break such records. I mean, stopping a huge, expensive, deadly missile with one bullet. Ukraine as it is. But uh, what is also important, uh, we may repeat the words of a Russian Freedom of Russia Legion, Russian volunteers, which they spoke today during that press conference, that we see after each attack on Ukraine, there are answers on Russian military objects and Russian infrastructure. Once again, a kind reminder to all worried we do not repeat the tactics of Russia. We are not a criminal country. We target legitimate objects, military objects or infrastructure objects that are used to later destroy Ukraine and kill Ukrainian people. Our only task is to take all Russian soldiers out of Ukraine, return back control over our borders and then remain strong country. So remember to subscribe to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and to see Russia defeated. But it goes without saying that each Russian attack on Ukraine will get its answer. And uh, Russian volunteers are working on that using drones and ruining military infrastructure in two of these regions. These bordering regions, Belgorod and Kursk border, Chernihiv and Sumy, are used by Russian army as a platform for launching of the missiles, for uh, the supply of troops and other things. That's why they are packed with all the evil ammunition. And during this 
indeed special military operation of Russian volunteers, they have destroyed 121 different items of ammunition like tanks, like machines, like missile systems, 50 were damaged and 1,500 Russian soldiers neutralized. We all know they don't care about human lives and there will be one more terrifying act illustration how they don't care about human lives when fighting with Russian volunteer inside uh, Belgorod and Kursk. So what we may see that cities like Belgorod and Kursk that were used to target Kyiv, Kharkiv and other locations in Ukraine now turn into a war-torn zone. Of course we do not target civilian objects, we are not orcs and we will never do that. Even though it may be quite difficult, but we control the situation and uh, Russian volunteers control that situation. But of course, when you hear explosions on the streets, when you see smoke, when you hear constant air raids, you do feel stressed, depressed. You may experience anxiety. And that's what people who live in Kursk and Belhorod realize right now. Those who could left the region. I have these memories from the start of invasion in Ukraine, like with one very big difference. In Ukraine, government and people, we are synchronized, we know the truth, we get advice. In Russia, they pretend nothing is happening and they simply describe explosions uh, and destructions of these military objects in a very typical Russian way. They say, these are explosive events. Can you imagine such terminology? Explosive events, not attacks, not special military operation, but explosive events. So I wish there were more explosive events all around Kremlin and a couple in each of Putin's bunkers. Like and share if you share my dreams. Anyway, um, what is bad uh, and what demonstrates this awful nature of uh, Russia. They use bombs to target Russian volunteer, Russian freedom legion on the territory of their own regions in Kursk and Belhorod and they've used, they've dropped like close to 300 bombs on these territories not caring about their own people. And this is a kind reminder to those who still say negotiations with Putin are possible. No, he is a global criminal and not only because of the things he does to Ukrainians, but also about the things he does to Russians. And um, this Russian volunteer corps, they state this is just the beginning, sums up or their military operation. And they have two main goals. Number one, to liberate Ukraine. And number two, to liberate Kremlin from Putin, which is not a bad idea. Of course, there are lots of work to do inside Russia apart from that, but that might be a good idea. And actually taking into account how Putin and his friends totally do not care about lives of their soldiers, lives of people who live close to the war zone, in Belgorod, they still do not have normal bomb shelters. They don't have air defense systems. They are all around Moscow and Putin's bunkers. And they are very vulnerable, actually. It's good that we are kind and we are adequate and we are not orcs and we don't target like they do in Ukraine. But still, of course, they feel stressed. Like when you have so many explosions, when you have so many drones flying. Believe me, I'm Ukrainian. I know how it feels. So anyway... Uh, it is super important that to some extent they feel what war is right now and maybe this will persuade them to fight against this war because Russians have all the instruments to stop it. As soon as Russia stops, returns our borders, we are free to continue living. That's what we want, nothing else. We will not follow them to Kremlin. That's the job of Russians and we see some really good initiatives appearing like uh, Freedom of Russia Legion, Siberian Battalion, Russian Volunteer Corps and this is actually good. Let me know do you believe in these initiatives and do you believe that war is finally returning back to Russia? I believe. Honestly I do believe and I think this is a great change in the course of this war and People should know about that. People should speak about that. So do share, like, subscribe if you're new to the channel. 
And remember to subscribe to my Instagram. I'm active there. Also, I am on X and on Threads and we have a beautiful Discord community and we plan our live stream this Saturday, 9 p.m. KF time. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and helping me grow, learn and film more. And I'm really grateful that I have this ability to share more about my beautiful country and how we feel during these challenging times. Also, we have a beautiful merch shop with really nice t-shirts and sweatshirts and caps that work well as conversation starters and reminders about Ukraine. But most importantly, we have to stay united, we have to win this war and to see Russia defeated and Putin in The Hague. Once again, thank you for your friendship, for your advice. I read all of your comments and looking forward for our question and answer session this Saturday live. Slava Ukraini!